If you're out stuck in the cold, then this just might save your life. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I was inspired recently by all those people out east that got stuck on the highway in the middle of winter in the snow because the roads were icy and they got stuck for something like 36 hours sitting in their car on a highway, not far from civilization, but because traffic was so backed up, they couldn't get any help, they couldn't get any food, people were cold in their car, starving for food, starving for drinks, and yet most of them were just in regular daily wear. They weren't dressed to hike miles to the nearest exit it. They didn't have any gear. In fact, one of the things that I heard is that people would start up their car until the car came up to temperature and then turn it off to save on gas. And some of the people had full tanks of gas, so they were able to do that. But some people ran out of gas. And so obviously they weren't able to warm up their car. It takes a little while to warm up the engine coolant and then get that through the heater core to warm up a car. So I was actually thinking if I got stuck in my car and maybe I wasn't in a place where I was near other people where worst case scenario, I could bang on someone else's window. So I actually looked at this because I've checked these out in the past. I've never used one, but this is an emergency sleeping bag. And I thought, well, if you get stuck in your car, it's really cold, maybe you can wrap yourself up in one of these. Now, I wanna show you that this five pack that I bought actually also comes with a little nylon drawstring bag. So I think, assuming you don't beat this thing up too badly, you can pack it up and reuse it. But if nothing else, you can put it in your little drawstring bag and put it in your backpack, your glove box, somewhere that you can easily retrieve it. Now, I will say this thing is quite small. It's a little bit bigger than those Mylar solar blankets, but it's very, very small and I think otherwise it's the same construction, but maybe slightly more robust than those. So first of all, it is in this bright orange, which is gonna be nice in case you're out in the middle of nowhere and need to use this to signal for help. But I just wanna show this to you because this is superior, I think, to the Mylar solar blankets in that this is kind of a bag. I mean, it's just like a large bag, but you can get in it. And I was thinking if you're in a car and you're just draping the solar blanket over you, that might help, it might be better than nothing, but you have lots of area where the air is still circulating around you. But I was thinking, yes, if I'm out in the middle of the wilderness, it's raining, jumping in this, laying on the ground, huddling underneath a tree might save my life because it's going to insulate me a little bit, at least trap the warm air that I'm producing around my body, keep the rain off. But as you can see here, it's just touching the ground and I'm holding it up and it's probably, I'm guessing this is probably six and a half feet long. So it's actually pretty long. And in terms of width, it seems like it's wide here. So plenty of space, even for a big guy like me to jump in there. Now, if I go down to this side here, this is the open side. So it's kind of like a giant garbage bag and you can see that Mylar material. So it's very reflective. So hopefully that will help reflect the heat back towards you. But I was thinking, I've got the shelter of my car. I'm just trying to stay warm. I don't want to put five heavy blankets in my trunk. You know, I do have a blanket in my trunk as well as some other gear, so I won't dehydrate or starve to death or freeze to death but you might have a car full of people and so you might not have enough supplies now you could definitely have three four five of these emergency sleeping bags in your car because they don't take up any space and they're actually quite affordable now because it is snowing and because it is very very cold and because i could not survive in my car in these temperatures without a little heat i thought this would be a great time to test these out so let's see if they work all right, so this is basically kind of the test that I wanted to do with the sleeping bag here because as I was watching the news, people stuck in their cars for 24, 36, 48 hours might just get really cold. And especially if you don't have a full tank of gas, you can't necessarily start up your car and warm it up. It is actually about 30 degrees outside. I've been sitting in the car a little while here. It's saying 38 degrees. So I think I'm getting a little body heat trapped in here, 39 degrees. So as I'm holding it, right? So it's about 38 degrees, but this is pretty much the temperature that I'm talking about. 32 degrees outside, and it's supposed to drop to about 9 or 10 degrees tonight. And so if I were stuck in my car overnight and I didn't have equipment to survive it, it could get very cold. Maybe deadly cold. I'm not sure if that would get you hypothermic overnight, especially in a car wrapped up. I have my thin winter jacket on. I have a t-shirt on, just jeans and tennis shoes. So I'm not bundled up in heavy clothes, layers with a hat or anything like that. But what I do have 
is my emergency sleeping bag right here. So I'm just kind of curious, if I have this in the car, is this going to be enough to kind of get me through being stuck in my car on a cold winter night? So all I'm going to do is kind of step into this thing, kind of pull it over me, and then I'm going to take my thermometer and just hold it in with me inside the bag and see what kind of temperatures we get. I'm not going to put it in my clothes. That might be a little cheating, but I'm just going to keep it with me inside the bag, and then we will register and see if we're getting above that 38 degrees that it's in the car already. Got inside my bag here. I've got plenty of room. I could actually pull this over my head if I really needed to. And one thing I can notice right off the bat is that it's just stopping the air from circulating around your body. It's just kind of like even a thin bed sheet will when you're in bed. And that kind of just helps it stop exchanging the air and helps you stop from losing that heat. So it's only been a couple minutes and I'll tell you what, it feels more comfortable. It doesn't feel like a heavy blanket, obviously. It's just a mylar type of blanket. It is also quite loud. So if you're going to move around a lot or if you got two people in here making the beast with two backs or something, it's gonna sound like you're unwrapping Christmas presents. But from the standpoint of, would I rather be in the car at night, in the cold, in the winter, in this or without this, I would definitely want this. And I tell you what, if I were outside and it was snowing, sleeting, raining, bad weather, elements, precipitation of any kind, if I were sleeping on the ground, wet ground, moist ground, dewy ground, snowy ground, I'd want this too. This aluminized mylar plastic here would be great for keeping off the elements. So I feel pretty comfortable, even though it's 32 degrees outside. I'm just kind of curious what the thermometer says already. Well, look at that. 51 degrees already and continuing to climb. 51 degrees isn't bad, again, but inside a house, anywhere from 67 to 73 degrees is pretty much room temperature. And I think when I was living in an apartment in downtown Chicago, one year when it was a polar vortex and some landlords weren't paying their heating bill, they were talking about how property managers legally had to keep their buildings at 64 degrees, I think. So maybe there is some scientific reason that 64 degrees is survivable or not. Or it could be totally arbitrary too because Chicago isn't known for always having the most logical reasons for everything. But I tell you what, if it were 60s at all around my body, in my car, in adverse wintry weather conditions, I think that'd be pretty pleasant. All right, 57 degrees and climbing. I tell you what, I don't know how much longer I'm going to stay in here because I didn't bring a movie or a television show like L.A. to Vegas to watch. But this is actually pretty comfortable. In fact, the coldest parts of me are when my legs down here in the footwell, I kind of spread them out, do a little man spreading, and my legs are pressed up against the door or the center console, and that plastic is actually very cold. So what I've noticed here is that my shins and my calves that are touching that are actually the coldest parts. If I kind of pull them away, I actually feel quite warm, which is pretty amazing. So I will say that if you are in an emergency situation, having a emergency sleeping bag like this, I think will go a long way. I mean, if you're in your car and you get stuck on the side of the road, on a snowy rural mountain road or something like that, and it is freezing outside, you can maintain 50 plus degrees in this little bag. And that might just be the difference between staying alive or dying of hypothermia. And for some of these people who were even on public highways and could not get rescued for two or three days, this would make your quality of life a lot better. Now, I will also say that they're very cheap. I think this three pack was something like 15 bucks. So that's $5 a bag. And I think I found one that was like five bags for $18. So that's even a little cheaper. So, you know, generally three or $4 per bag of this is what you're going to pay. And I think that is cheap insurance to have maybe four of these in the trunk of your car with your little survival bag, you know, some M&Ms, a thermos bottle, those types of things that you can melt some snow, stay warm. You know, for 20 bucks, you can have a pretty good little survival kit in your car. You know, it's specific to the car, but I would rather be inside my car with my family or friends or my other fellow survivors, all putting off body heat, living in these little emergency sleeping bags, than not having them at all. One last temperature check here. Look at that. 65.8 degrees. That is quite comfortable. I'm actually really surprised at that. And so I think that is a successful test. If you want to pick these up, give yourself a little insurance. If you're going to be heading out into the cold winter air, I definitely would have them with me. I'll put links to everything that you need in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out. We can discover more and explore so much deeper. We can live better than ever thanks to Peter. Peter Von Panda.
dressed to hike out, you know. They weren't dressed to hike miles to the near... Ugh, 